Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. So today we're going to break down the latest monthly report, which is out on the RSA website right now. Anyway, kicking off with AI for the monthly report. They're improving the character collision avoidance system. We saw this on ATV, making sure that the AI can maneuver around environments smoothly and realistically. They also worked on the AI evasive maneuvers. So an AI pilot will try to break away with increasing and varied angles. They'll also try to maintain momentum and chain together attack maneuvers. Now it's interesting to see how the AI has improved, uh, whether they've improved much in dogfighting for 3.5 or if they still just fly straight at you and try and crash into you. For animations, they've finished off a new batch of animations for the ship dealer. They've provided remaining animations for Twitch Pachico and work continues on a yet to be announced character as well. Not sure who that could be. The American Sign Language emotes, which we saw on ATV recently, are being added to the game. They're currently adding facial animations to complement them. This is a really nice touch from CIG, especially for those who are deaf or hard of hearing, which is just nice that they would go to the effort to make that for those who need it. And finally, for animation, they are syncing with cinematics for a few interesting segments that backers will enjoy soon. I have no idea what that could be. If you've got any ideas, do pop it in the comments below. For art, they've invested a significant effort to eye contact. So if the eyes converge slightly, they appear cross-eyed. Not enough, they look distracted. If the eyelids close too much, they look sleepy. And if they're open too much, they just look outright creepy. This, they say, is of utmost importance to get right. And it's quite good that they are spending a lot of time on these little finite details because it is something that other games tend to do wrong. They're also fixing offsets with weapons like reload animations and locomotion issues with pistols. For the art environments, they've obviously been working hard on Art Corp and Area 18, creating some custom advertising. The planet is in its final stages and now includes skyscrapers rising above the no-fly zone to provide players with landing opportunities. Very happy that it's not just going to be restricted to Area 18 and the other landing locations. Be interesting to see what we can get up to on top of these buildings. Uh, they've also made progress on common elements like the transit, habitation and security areas. They're all moving to the art pass stage. These elements alongside garages and hangars will also be added to Microtech's landing zone, New Babbage. There is a new transit connection between Lawville's central business district and the TESA spaceport so players can bypass L19 residences if they just want to go straight to their ship, which is definitely a bit of a quality of life touch there. They're also creating a library of exotic looking flora to fill new Babbage biomes and players can look forward to some upcoming information with the procedural caves. For audio, the audio code team and sound designers finished work on the camera shake and ship vibration systems. The ship shakes and hums as the engines kick on, causing a little minor camera shake. They've also added new sound to a range of ships as part of the new flight model. It'll be interesting to know which ships will initially have this. Obviously, it's likely to be the, the Gladius, the Hornets, uh, the current more popular ships like Auroras. And they've also spent the majority of time working on Area 18 sounds, testing a new method for unique atmosphere. Finally, they've created sound profiles for the Gemini S71 assault rifle and the Coda handgun. Apparently, both of these will actually appear in Squadron 42, they say. So for the back end, they're laying the foundation for the new diffusion network to help scalability for back end structures of the game. Just ensuring the dedicated game servers correctly connect to the new diffusion servers. They've also added support to the subsumption service so it reads directly into the data core P4K system for increased efficiency and unification. Now, I'm not sure what the P4K system is. If anybody does know, please let me know in the, in the comments below. Characters have developed new tools and shader tech to improve the realism of hair while maintaining quality and performance. Pachico's hair will be the test case for this new hair pipeline, hopefully in time for 3.5, like what they said on ATV. Uh, but they're also refining the Jean concepts. Now, it's been a long while since we've seen anything up to date on the alien concepts. So it'll be nice to see what the current thinking of the Jean looks like. For design, the focus is on implementing Area 18 shops, NPCs and usables. They finished this last month, so now it's all about polishing to ensure a believable and immersive experience upon release. A new member has actually joined to help with mission implementation and improvements. He's currently set on the ECN mission sets. This is very important. Getting new staff is a struggle at the moment for CIG, but it's important to improve the missions just as equally, um, just making sure that the, the missions are more robust. 
and play out properly. And they've also made progress on getting the values of objects in game based on their properties. They created a system to allow them to easily adjust the values when details are finalized. Uh, that will really help the economy. For engineering, they've added basic HDR support to the editor, provided material layer support for the planet tech and continued to improve the character hair. Game physics is progressing with the projectile manager 2.0. Support was added for ocean fast Fourier transformation known as FFT uh, wave generation to physics buoyancy calculations. Uh, so the projectile manager is to get the weapons more robust and with you know the damage types being effective. This FFT I assume will allow for objects to float realistically in bodies of water, hopefully leading up to actual ships floating in water one day. Uh, it's all fancy words I assume just to say things will float. So for gameplay they're creating UI for the new DNA customizer. They're also focused on video streaming for com calls. They had to refactor the communications component to utilize the voice service call mechanism. They've also researched into the VP9 streaming format and video streaming improvements were completed and will be rolled out with the upcoming release. Now VP9 is a royalty free video coding format from Google so it will be interesting to see what effects this has on the video calls via the Mobiglass because at the moment they are very very sketchy. For vehicles the gimbal assist and latest hood improvements are finalized and polished allowing for better balance of the new weapon control scheme. They've added the hood and keybinds for input sensitivity on turrets like what we saw in ATV. They've also implemented adjustable speeds for gimbal target movement based on proximity to center aim and fixed the snapping and erratic aim bugs. Anything that makes the turrets better is definitely a good thing. So scanning improvements that are coming in 3.5 include adjusting the area for nav point scanning, enabling the use of the nav point hierarchy and added a boline to opt into the scanning data. Basically a boline is adding either a true or a false read option. So I assume it's just adding a bit more variation whether what you're seeing is true or false depending on if someone is trying to mask their signatures. This will all make scanning more involving but they're also setting up turrets to generate signatures and can be scannable and adding specific icons for scanned and unscanned targets. Hopefully this will make the, the scanning mechanic kind of like a dedicated radar crew role. It would be nice if you could have a, a, a crew member sat in a chair doing all the scanning because if a pilot is trying to just navigate and fly, doing all the scanning as well and trying to determine if something is true or false will require a bit of help, I think. Anyway, the graphics team continued with CPU optimizations, including three times performance savings. They've also helped artists optimize their content to save valuable time. For level design, they began planning the modular space stations, including a look at the libraries, the rooms, and the content that goes into them. The procedural tool, they say, is now at a stage where they can slowly start ramping up the modular station production. Personally, I'm hoping one day we get to see huge stations Similar to the Sevastopol station from the Alien Isolation game, that would be really cool. In live design, they're refactoring the existing missions to make them scalable to make more content available in the planetary system. Significant progress has been made on a new drug stealing mission for this Twitch Pachico, as well as Blackjack security counter missions. The counter missions task less morally corrupt players to destroy the stash. This could be a mission that pits players against one another. Maybe one of them grabs the drugs for Patricia and then the other team or the other player has to try and destroy them, kind of creating a bit of uh, PvP there, which should be quite fun. Uh, they're also implementing a variety of encounters with security forces and bounty hunters when players have a high crime stat, as well as defining aspects of the law system, such as punishment, paying fines and bounty hunting. For lighting, the focus is on lighting area 18, just ensuring the new advertising assets and visual effects pop from the environment and provide interesting and varied visuals. I'm really looking forward to seeing Area 18. It's, gonna, it's definitely going to have that Blade Runner look to it where it's all neon and bright and in your face. Narrative uh, further fleshing out the lore relating to Art Corp and its moons. Plus a new mission giver contracts and catchy slogans in Area 18. They've expanded the wildline sets for security pilots, bounty hunters and combat assist pilots. Just basically creating random speech which relates to the situation. Uh, they will also use this to test the new gameplay for future builds. For player relations, they're adding more how-to articles to the web knowledge base, which is definitely a good thing. 
in props, the Area 18 core street furniture is now in and they are adding assets to give life to the streets, the alleyways and the landing zone as a whole. For ships, the Reliance are now finished. They're now in testing and addressing any bugs before they go live. They're very busy now with the 300i as well. They've continued production on the 890 Jump, bringing more rooms into Final Art. The Karak is heading towards Grey Box Complete and select areas are being polished for review. That is coming along super quick. I'm hoping it will jump forwards to an earlier patch, but you know, I'm not saying anything. Development continues on the Banu Defender. They're using ZBrush to sculpt the interior, creating an organic style. Uh, and with the exterior gray box now complete, they say it's looking fantastic. The Vanguard's in interior is getting wrapped up. The entire area from the cockpit seat back is now completely redone, more than they initially intended but now it's just adjusting the exterior to accommodate these changes. For system design, they're improving and upgrading the Art Corp no fly zones. This they say is very challenging due to it covering the whole planet. They're also grafting new actions onto the base shopkeeper behaviors to allow them to pick up objects, give these objects to the player and just interact with things on the counter without having to build new ones from scratch. That's going to look really nice. Just the immersive look of shopkeepers not just standing there statically, but looking like they're actually up to something. Uh, they've also made it easier to implement specific chunks of FPS AI behavior as the system is now more modular. They're also adding new mineable rocks to Art Corp's moons with Walla having a new type of crystalline formation, which we've seen on the, the concepts of this. And they're also developing AI traffic over Art Corp. Now they're starting small with a few ships coming and going but they're looking into ways to expand this into bigger ships, multiple ships, uh, while being mindful of performance. For UI, they're working on in-fiction advertising and branding for Area 18, including animations and holograms. They've made headway on the 3D area map and begun to bring the rental functionality from the Arena Commander front end to in-game consoles in Area 18. Now, this 3D map is to be your sort of local area while, while you're in uh, FPS very useful for combat, uh, but also the ship rental option. This is coming in 3.6. It looks like it's going to be specifically at Art Corp. I'm not sure if you'll be able to rent ships from other landing locations like Lawville, but at least they're making progress now. So that 3.6, it's ready for us because ship renting is going to be a big one. For visual effects, they've updated the particle lighting system, which will improve shadows for crisper, smoother shadows and remove the performance heavy tessellation. Art Corp's two moons will actually be the first moons to use this new particle lighting system when it's ready to roll out. This will really help uh, with long shadows when they're cast at sunset and sunrise. That's going to look really nice. Anything they do to improve the visuals is always a good thing in my book. Uh, they're also continuing to iterate on the thruster damage effects, rolling them out to all the ships. They've carried out extensive visual exploration of the new Tachyon energy weapon class. And on that note, weapons have completed the Gemini S-71, the Castlec Arms Coda, the Tachyon Cannons, the Gallanson Tactical Ballistic Cannons, plus the five variants of the Vanguard's nose guns. So that is it for the monthly report, guys. Some really interesting points. Let me know what you found most interesting. A lot of the stuff we already know because we do see snippets of it on ATV, but there were some little gems in there. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. More Star Citizen content coming on a daily basis. And post 3.5, I'm going to include a whole new tutorial series, which goes from the very basics of getting into the game and what you need to do, all the way up to more advanced tutorials as well. Hit that like button. Really helps me out, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you next time.